Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. As this video goes live, we should be mere hours away from patch 6.58, bringing us new balance changes and a brand new season of PvP. With a new season comes the chance to try out a new role. And today's video is my advanced guide to the Reaper in Crystalline Conflict, a role which has been strong since the very beginning and has only grown stronger since. To date, many players still struggle when it comes to fighting against a Reaper. I shall be going through some of my strategies. Combo actions, strengths and weaknesses, including my Hell's Ingress target lock macro. With a simple understanding of the role, even a new player can be feared on the Reaper. Thank you all for your continued support as we recently hit 2,000 subscribers. Enjoy today's video, happy hunting in the new season, and I shall see you all in the next one. Right at the start of the match, I begin by going through the enemy team lineup. The White Mage is my main go-to target, alongside the Machinist. I need to play safe to begin, as their crowd control can be detrimental to Reapers. The Paladin is of no concern. Whether they use Guard or not, this will not hinder my ability to pump out a lot of damage. I need only worry about the Dragoon and the Samurai Limit Breaks, while at the same time, they are great targets to trigger my Arcane Crest. Now Palestria is rather open in the center so I prefer to position off to the side. This will allow me to use the speed lane should I see a flanking opportunity, or to dive in and assist the team. They, however, do not make the mistake of spreading out. Their paladin, on the other hand, is far too eager to jump in. Following up with the team, he was rapidly forced from the battle, allowing me to turn my full attention to the machinist, who cared more for early objective time over his own positioning. This puts my team one up in the opening battle and you can see the desperation setting in. They start to pile up on the objective. All I need to do is hold, while forcing them to break my arcane crest. This applies healing to my allies, right after I retreat, while pumping out strong AoE damage, giving myself the chance to restore, and as you can see, allowing my team to finish the cleanup on the samurai. Looking at their lineup, you can see their dragoon is out of resources. Perfect timing. As he is forced to flee, their trigger-happy paladin returns, this guy makes for a wonderful offering to the 12, while fueling my team's limit gauges. Then returning to point, I see no reason to hold my limit break. At this point, I treat it as a throwaway. I pop limit break to force guards, and to push some quick extra damage. My aim is to finally win the opening battle, in order to gain objective time. Right here is where a stagger begins to form. The dragoon is killed right behind me, leaving only the machinist and the returning samurai. Honestly, a Samurai into a Reaper is a good lineup for me, and I do not need to engage with him. Instead, pick off squishier targets, giving their Machinist no time to breathe. You can then see that their Samurai looks a bit lost and confused, resulting in an easy feed following his Machinist rather than giving up the objective to regroup. Then, just as you think they could not make any more mistakes, their White Mage goes for Kamehameha. This is huge for us. Not only does this weaken their recon test, but allows me to steal their health kit. The less resources the enemy have to work with, the harder any recon test becomes. At this point, I feel like I have free range to overextend. I have zero doubts my team can continue moving the objective while I go off hunting, and as you see, they take the bait. I end up in a 3v1, might sound scary at first. This, however, leaves a 4v2 on point. Here I use Limit Break to buy time and to fully focus down their White Mage who was happily enough to take me back to point. As soon as I claim the kill, I do not overstay my welcome. If I had gotten greedy here, I was dead for sure. Right as I retreat, their machinist tries to snipe me down. Thankfully, I handled my resources well, topped up and got right back into the action. I begin by diving their machinist once more, as I expected their samurai to go for the one-shot limit break. However, at this stage, it tells me this samurai is rather new and learning. Their paladin once again follows up alone, with his white mage wildly out of position. I have seven stacks of immortal sacrifice, at which point their white mage had zero chance of escape, and this is all part of the same stagger. They do manage to finally start grouping up, but their dragoon got a little bit overconfident, leaving them with only three rather than four to push back. Here we have the usual back and forth, with their samurai finally catching me off guard with Chiten. I dived quickly behind cover, however my team made short work of him.
From here on, it is the home stretch. Starting with their white mage, once again throwing away their limit break. He does successfully, however, divide the attention for a few seconds. I then ditch him to return to the last push. Their dragoon is clearly stalling for his last little bit of limit break charge. But as soon as I spot their machinist's return, the play was obvious. I pop limit break and burn him down as fast as possible, in order to maintain player advantage. Their poor samurai drops once again, without ever limit breaking, leaving their white mage with one last stalling attempt to no success. I am also going to hit you with a second round. This one does a great job at showcasing just what Reapers are capable of when players do not know how to handle you. I start this match just like any other, positioning off to the side ready for a potential flank. With a little bit of teasing, the enemy team do take notice of me, and for whatever reason, they forget about me seconds later. This lined up perfectly to land a big group heavy, forcing out a couple of purifies, which in the opening fight, being forced to waste your purify can give your team a huge advantage. This engagement was ideal. My white mage, the legend that he is, granted me Aqua Veil for my play, alongside the enemy white mage wasting their imp skill right after my dive. Forcing imp early makes life so much easier. As the battle kicks off, I am jumping from target to target, using natural cover when possible, with the aim of dividing the enemy team further. In doing so, my team was controlling the opening battle quite well and in doing so I claim an early limit break. I shall let these next few moments unfold, so you can take a moment to see my thought process in real time. At this stage, we are making slow and steady progress, and a good stagger has formed, with their gunbreaker being far too aggressive. So right now, I do not need to get cocky, play slow and jump in on any chance to pump out large amounts of damage. I have also pinned out their summoner as their weakest link. Simple dives were enough to scare him away. The less damage coming our way, the better, and if I can burn through either their gunbreaker or their dragoon, it makes things much easier to deal with the scholar, which can be pretty tough to take down. I pop Limit Break for that extra disruption and burst damage, seeing that his mana resources were basically gone. My hope was he would be forced to Limit Break. However, in the end, he chose not to, and moments before, their White Mage wasted their own Limit Break. Looking at all of my team's Limit Breaks coming online is a clear indicator to playing more aggressive. This is where all team focus has fallen apart with the enemy team. You can now watch as I am freely allowed to do anything I like, resulting once again in another easy win.
For your basics, we have slice into waxing slice, ending with infernal slice. Nice and basic can be used alongside the arcane crest to increase the damage output. Much of your play will revolve around the immortal sacrifice stacks, and you can hold up to 8. The higher the stack count, the more damage plentiful harvest can deal. Outside of kills and assists, the only action to grant these stacks is Soul Slice. A great way to easily land these onto a target is to begin with Grim Swarth for the heavy effect, followed by two Soul Slices for that instant two stacks. To increase the burst on this combo, first begin with the Arcane Crest. This adds 10% more damage than open with Death Warrant, into Grim Swarth followed instantly by Guillotine. Then if your target is above 50% HP, go with Soul Slice. If their health is lower than 50%, you can always use the Harvest Moon before Soul Slice. After 7 seconds, 50% of the damage you dealt to that target within those 7 seconds will strike that target in a single burst. Death Warrant is your best ability to catching a player completely off guard. A great AoE combo begins with the Arcane Crest for that damage boost, then into Death Warrant, Grim Swarth followed by Guillotine. Follow up with the Plentiful Harvest into the Harvest Moon, ending with Death Warrant's detonation. This allows for strong control when the enemy team piles up, and the effectiveness only increases depending on your stacks of Immortal Sacrifice. You don't always need to go for the strongest burst rotation. Many actions complement each other. You need to do only enough to get the job done. As long as you always die with Arcane Crest and Death Warrant at the ready, you set yourself up to outlast and out-DPS your opponents. However, the moment will arise to unleash your most powerful combo. Start by activating your Limit Break. Activate Arcane Crest to boost your damage, apply Death Warrant to the same target, then throw out your Communio. Follow this up with an 8-stack Plentiful Harvest, into your Grim Swarth Guillotine combo, ending in Harvest Moon. This can all be done within the 7-second time limit, allowing Death Warrant to hit for a huge 33,000 damage, effectively turning into a Limit Break by itself. Much of how you will combo will depend on the stress of the situation. As long as you keep calm not to waste your Arcane and Warrant without reason, you should find great success. During your Limit Break, you also have the option of your melee rotation. Thanks to the Limit Break now lasting 20 seconds, you now have more than enough time to chase a single target. A great combo is to once again begin with the Arcane Crest and Death Warrant, into Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, and then Lemur Slice, followed by Communio, followed up with Plentiful Harvest and Harvest Moon. This one is harder to time with targets on the run. However, it will have its moment to shine. Many combos also begin with Hell's Ingress to close the gap, although Reaper is the only melee rotation that cannot dive right onto their target. That was until I made this macro. You must be moving in order for the macro's lock-on to work. Done right, you dive right towards your selected target, or if you want to use this defensively, place a focus marker on a team member. Perhaps a target you know is highly likely to get dived, allowing you to aid them much faster. Over the past year, the Reaper has received many buffs and straight-up new abilities, making you now one of the best roles when it comes to AoE damage. You also hold some of the most powerful single-target damage, which only increases in potential the longer the fight goes on, with the assistance of kills and assists. You can set up such a powerful DPS combo, there is no job that will survive outside of their guard. With the use of my macro, you can now teleport in the very direction of your target. This not only limits the mistakes you will make, but can prevent missing crucial follow-up plays set up by your team. One of your strongest assets is the Arcane Crest. Not only does this apply a huge 12,000 barrier, should this barrier break, yourself and any allies within the 15 yard radius shall receive regen over the next 6 seconds. This one ability promotes an aggressive playstyle and can play a huge impact in long drawn out teamfights. Your limit break is secretly one of the best in Crystalline Conflict. Guard break alone can be insanely powerful. The High Hysteria can win you games in overtime, but now the Limit Break lasts 20 seconds, giving you more than enough time to also utilize the melee portion more often rather than just throw out Communio. Your main weakness is crowd control, especially from the range jobs. Two to three range players can actually shut you down from ever making large plays. Many of your stronger abilities are only accessed through your Limit Break. Therefore, not combining your normal actions well can lead to a low DPS output. Your Plentiful Harvest is one of your strongest skills, however this has a long 60 second cooldown. Smart players also know not to play into your Arcane Crest, and equally having passive allies will not aid into your kills and assists. 
meaning it can take a long time for your most powerful burst rotation to be ready. A lack of patience is the main killer for any new Reaper player, while at the same time a lack of aggression leaves you in a position of just existing. Stick to it as the Reaper comes with a learning curve of understanding when to and when not to get aggressive. And there you have it, everything one needs to know for learning the Reaper. Normally I would do a comparison to every role, however I feel the Reaper does not need one and I would only end up repeating myself. From my personal experience, you are evenly matched with every other role. They can kill you just as fast as you can kill them. Correct cooldown usage and using the map to your advantage pushes fights in your favor. Good luck to all you new PvP players out there. Stick to it, happy hunting, and I shall see you all in the next one.